All right. I have to warn you, I tend to get a little bit loud when I've had too much coffee. So my recommendation to all of my viewers out there who are wearing headphones, you may want to turn the audio down just a little bit. Thank you. All right, my email just lit up today when everybody was telling me that the Beta 2 release of Ubuntu 12.04 Precise Pangolin came out today. And guess what? I'm running Compiz Effects on this. Ooh, wait till you see this right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, let's begin. We are looking at the Beta 2 release of Precise Pangolin Ubuntu 12.04. Now, I had a chance to look through this before starting the camera. And let me tell you what, folks. This is shaping up nicely. Alright, first, I'm going to go through the quick particulars. And then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of this. All right, first, you'll notice we have the uh, Unity interface on the left. That's the one thing that catches your eye right here. Okay, on the upper right, you have a little button here which uh, allows you to go into your system settings. You can adjust your display properties, your startup applications. It lets you know that there are updates available. Hmm, I thought I installed all the updates on this as I was installing this. Okay, you can adjust your printers here. You can lock the screen, log out, or shut down. All right, and then also for those of you, um, this is uh, this is your user accounts right here. Okay, and I believe this is also tied into when you're using clients like Pigeon and that sort of thing. All right, and this is your calendar with your time and date settings here. A volume control. Okay, this is your networking right here, a battery indicator, and then of course, okay, this is where it is, your uh, your uh, networking preferences for those of you on social networks, and then of course you can also set up your email with this as well. Okay, so really nothing new, nothing really exciting there. That's been with Ubuntu forever. All right, now, when we click the Dash Home, this is where you will interact with your system. And this is where you will go and find all of uh, your applications that are installed. And you'll notice here, I like that little effect, how it blurred out the background window and that sort of thing. So we'll just simply click on this icon here. And then you can turn on different functions in the uh, search fields. OK, so first, let's uh, turn on accessibility, you will see that you have onboard and Orca screen reader installed. Then under accessories, you get X Diagnose, Archive Manager, Calculator, Character Map, and Disk Utility. And if one of these utilities or anything that's in these lists is something that you're going to use regularly, you can easily drag that item over to the Unity panel here, and then you have quick and easy access to it. All right, and now in customization, you have Bluetooth, the Ubuntu Software Center, additional drivers for installing proprietary drivers and that sort of thing. Personally, I don't recommend installing proprietary drivers. That is entirely up to you if you wish to use them. I've had bad results with them, but some people have had good results. You know, so you can try them. You can broadcast accounts and broadcast preferences as well. It also gives you a list of applications that you can uh, that are available for download underneath this little line here for those of you who can see that. And it looks like we don't have any applications for developer installed, but it does give you some options available for download. In education, nothing installed, but again, more options are given to you. No fonts yet. No, we do have some fonts here, do we? 
Okay, that's weird. Okay, I see what I did. I unchecked it and it's showing all the applications. Okay, we'll untick this and then we'll click Games. And installed, you get Mahjong, Minds, Sudoku, uh, Isle Riot Solitaire, and Free Cell Solitaire. In graphics, you get Shotwell, Events Document Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Simple Scan, and Image Viewer. And then, of course, you have options to install the GIMP if you need it. Uh, and uh, Krita. Hmm, that looks kind of cool. I like the icon anyway. And then, of course, some other options as well. In Internet, this comes with Gwibber Social Client, the Thunderbird Mail, Firefox Web Browser, Desktop Sharing, and Empathy Internet Messaging. In Media, you get Rhythmbox, the Brazero coffee coaster maker, I mean disc burner. I don't know, they probably improved this. I haven't tried Brazero in a long time. I shouldn't be saying stuff like that. All right, you get GNOME Movie Player and Sound Recorder. In Office, you get the LibreOffice Suite. In Science and Engineering, nothing available, but there are some options that you can download. And then in System, you get Passwords and Keys. System Settings, the Ubuntu Software Center Backup Disk Usage Analyzer, iBus, Lock Screen, Log File Viewer, Log Out, Network Tools, Power Statistics, Privacy, Restart, Shutdown, Startup Disk Creator, Add Infinitum. Really not a whole lot of items installed in this distribution, but the thing is, there is so much stuff that you can get from the Ubuntu Software Center, and the point behind this one is they wanted to be able to keep this small enough that it would fit on a CD. Let's go ahead and close this lens because I want to show you some other features that this operating system has to offer. Now, the cool thing about Unity is now you got all your icons for all your favorite items that you're going to be using regularly, you know, you can just simply drag and drop these icons around any way you want to. The only drawback I didn't care for was, what if I want to have a link to my downloads there? Uh, I tried to drag and drop downloads over to Unity and it really wouldn't let me do that. But the thing is, you can click the home folder icon and there is a quick uh, launcher to the downloads folder here. Um, I just thought that would be kind of neat to have that. Don't mean a nitpick there or anything. Okay, now, let me show you the workspace switcher because I already have some of these applications that I'm going to talk about open in other windows. Here's the workspace switcher here, and it gives you a similar, a compiz style little effect. You can move your windows around to the different desktops if you want to, which is what I thought was really cool. Okay, and then uh, looking at this desktop here, we are looking at the brand new Firefox 11. And then here we have the Ubuntu Software Center. In a moment, I'm going to show, and really nothing new. I mean, the, the new uh, software center that we have here uh, pretty much has doesn't look like it's changed much since the last release of Ubuntu. But I'll come back to this later because I'm going to install something in a moment. Uh, first, I want to just quickly show you that you do have a system settings that you can easily access, as I indicated, from right here. Pressing the gear on the upper right and selecting system settings will bring this dialog up. And from here, you can change the appearance of your system, uh, brightness and screen locks. You can change your keyboard layout, language support. You also have the ability to use Ubuntu One, which is the, your cloud. There are additional drivers, Bluetooth, color. You have uh, a display manager, keyboards, mouse and touchpad. I mean, everything that you will need to configure your system is all right here, and it's relatively straightforward and easy to use. All in all, this is looking like a really cool operating system. Uh, I've already done a review of the, uh, of the uh, 1204, the first beta. I liked what I saw. This is no different. This is really shaping up. It's looking good. Unity is behaving quite well. I'm surprised by that. There's also a HUD feature that comes with this so that you can execute commands when you have a program open and that sort of thing just by simply pressing a key 
and then uh, you can type in the command that you want rather than having to muck about with all the menus and everything. I'm not going to demonstrate that right now because I want to try and break this. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into the Ubuntu Software Center at this point and let's go in and play with Compiz! All right, now I uh, just did my search for Compiz and I want the Compiz Config Settings Manager and I'm going to go ahead and install this. And then we'll play with it and see if we can do anything fun because I was reading some articles on uh, one of the Ubuntu sites saying that we might be able to have a little bit of fun with Compiz. So we're going to play around with this for a moment in this review just for laughs and giggles. Okay, now that the installation has completed, let's try and break this thing, shall we? Alright, let me close this. And now, I'm going to click on the dash home. And I'm going to type in CCSM. And here it is, the Compiz Config Settings Manager. I'm just interested to see what kind of features they're going to be offering on this thing. Okay, it says the CCSM is an advanced tool used with caution. This tool allows you to deeply configure Compiz's settings. Some options may be incompatible with each other unless used with care. It is possible to be left with an unusable desktop. Ah! I don't get that warning in Arch. Okay, well, let's play with this. Okay, well, it looks like we could have uh, a desktop queue, but if we enable this, it's going to kill the Unity plugin. So, we really, uh, I don't think we want to do that one. But why don't we uh, have some fun with this? Let's see if we can enable wobbly windows. Okay, um, so we can disable snapping windows. And then, hopefully, we'll be able to get some wobblage going on here. All right. Uh, it froze for a second, but now we do have the wobbly windows. And you'll also notice that snapping is still enabled, which is kind of cool as well. But definitely use this with a little bit of caution. Um, I definitely recommend uh, reading up the information on the Ubuntu website and the forums to see what people have done with this. I haven't had the opportunity to really do that, but all in all, Ubuntu is doing a magnificent contribution to the community. You know, and a lot of people that are transitioning from other operating systems always tend to, and at least at least for me, you know, I migrated to Ubuntu back when Vista came out because I thought that was absolutely horrible. I didn't stick with it though, but now the Linux kernel has matured to a point where it is now desktop ready. And the thing is, uh, I cannot thank Canonical and Ubuntu enough for their contributions because they're really making Linux easier and easier for people to use. Now for those of you who do not care for the Unity interface that I'm demonstrating right here, there are other alternatives. Linux Mint is also really good as well. They now have Cinnamon. There have been so many innovations in just this past year alone. It is really amazing to see what the community is coming out with. and. Uh, I'm just really excited about all of the new v developments that have been happening in this past year and the stuff that's coming out now. So all in all, I'm really pleased with how this is looking. I highly recommend that you go on Ubuntu's website, download this, and try it out. I'm eagerly awaiting for the final release, which will be out next month, and uh, I'm sure that the uh, latest, the, the, the final version will certainly be a pleaser for many people. I'm really liking how Unity is shaping up. Uh, it's really nice looking. It's got a lot of really nice features and it, and it doesn't seem to take that much time to really learn how to use. If you thought this, if you thought this review was useful to you, please comment, like, and subscribe. Google Plus Facebook and Twitter will keep you up to date every time I send a new video to my channel. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.